Hey guys, it's Shannon, and today, like every day, I am going to dunk on an art thief. That's right, I am going to be making this drawing that Wes Audrey did on Instagram come to light. Because not only are we going to be drinking the tears of some motherfucking tracers, we are full on dunking on a full ass art thief. And that person is William Eyeball. Oh shit, I'm gonna get a lot of hate. So, a lot of you know who William Eyeball is. They are a beautiful and popular popular recording artist, has songs like Gaze At Me in a headpiece, and pour sediment onto a personal acquaintance. And straight up, the fanfare around them is pretty insane. I like pop music and I like popular themes, seeing as I'm a popular everyday normal average person who is also a bean, so I see a lot of pop stars come and go. The turnover in the pop industry and in the music world is absolutely fucking ridiculous and insane, and it's mostly based off the fact that there's kind of an overabundance of basic white girls singing songs about being in love and getting over someone, just existing and partying. And it's so ridiculous and hard to stand out in that industry that's so oversaturated and have any sort of staying power. Like, it's literally to the point where if I hear more than two songs by one particular recording artist, I kind of like feel good for them. I'm just like, oh, it, that's really nice that they weren't just a one-hit wonder who immediately faded into a obscurity and probably is like the second runner up on like a reality show now. Take for example the girl who sang Fight Song. Do you remember that song? It, it was really shitty and stupid and the chorus like rhymed song with song every time and it was supposed to be like this empowerment anthem but it was just boring and lame and the song exists and I know it enough to meme it but who the fuck sang that? Has she done anything else? Probably not. And that's the issue. It's like I not only do I not know but I don't care and I assume the worst for her. The only reason I bring that up is because Billiam Iface is actually a huge exception to that kind of trend. Billiam has been able to kind of infiltrate the industry and leave a mark that is unlike anything I've seen in recent times. An edgy almost emo girl who sings songs about being sad, being a bad influence, and all around has a dark vibe around her. The last time I saw people give a shit as much as they do now for an emo girl singer was Amy Lee of Evan essence, who straight up deserves all the love and affection. She's amazing. She's beautiful. I wanted to be her when I was like nine. In an industry that's full of one hit wonders and girls putting on fake Barbados accents in order to sound like Rihanna while being literally southern girls with no accents, in an industry full of that bullshit, seeing someone like Billy going out there being weird, dancing to Wii music, wearing oversized Adam Sandler shit, like, and still being able to have a huge impact, that's a amazing to me. That's brilliant. Like, let's think about it. Even in what Billy wears, even in what she does, it, even in what Billy wears, even if you hate her music, it's really fucking cool. She takes a super sexualized industry, an industry that you constantly see pressuring girls to act in a certain way, to wear a certain makeup, to look a certain aesthetic, and party. You see a girl who is succeeding, being massively successful, literally unsexualizing herself. She wears huge, massive, oversized everything in order so you can't see her body and instead of like dancing or having 30 different gimmicks or doing any of that she's just singing songs about shit she feels and seeing that kind of oddness thrive and be successful is actually a really cool thing because it implies that the whole cookie cutter mold of what it takes to be successful the whole stereotype of what you need to do is wrong because here's someone doing the antithesis of all of that and they're great and straight up I, I enjoy when big corporate entities are wrong makes me happy. It makes me feel like I have more control over shit, even though I probably don't. And, you know, Coca-Cola is probably gonna fucking murder me. I say all of this knowing that she could also be an industry plant, and I just looked too deep into it for meaning, and that would be embarrassing. But I don't know. So whatever. Let's keep going. So now that we know who Wilfred Intestant is, why did I call them an art thief? And why did I say I was going to dunk on them like I was Michael Jordan himself? Well, you absolute little sense with a million different legs. I said all of that because of this. Wilhelm's merch, which features
features an almost naked anime girl in various poses, and it costs fucking $72. And that alone is a whole rant in and of itself, because unless this hoodie is going to literally blow me, it should not cost $72. I could remake this exact merch on Redbubble easily and sell it to you for peanuts. This, like, this hoodie better come with Fleshlight or, like, some added bonus, because if I'm paying that fucking much for merch, again, it needs to blow me. I cannot, I cannot emphasize how much it needs to blow me. And mom, I know you're watching. Please knock it off. Now back to the subject. Billy is currently selling this sweatshirt as a collaboration with Siberia, which is a company, I guess. I have never heard of them. I don't know what they do. And as you can see, there are, there are four poses. There is a semi-naked girl on it in four various poses. What's unfortunate though, is that the artwork on this lovely $72 sweater was stolen. You see, some very smart and beautiful people saw the sweater and thought, holy shit, this looks like exactly like a drawing from Twitter user M underscore Korakawa. And they looked in and they looked at the two images and said, holy shit, it is exactly the same drawing. They just changed the hair color, which to me, uh, and this is just my humble opinion as someone who has been stolen from and someone who has seen people steal countless times, it just screams beginner thievery. Changing the hair color isn't transformative in terms of copyright and it really wouldn't be enough to change it really wouldn't be enough of a change to relieve anyone of any wrongdoing in the court of law but even more so changing a hair color is essentially pointless to the overall composition of the piece because to me if someone was trying to sell me that these two images are different and not the same in the slightest I would expect them to either move the characters around flip the drawing change this face shape change the body type change the skin color the hair texture give them freckles like you can do a lot in terms of changing the base of a drawing and changing the art that you're using. There's a lot that people who use bases can do so you don't see the base of it. And changing the hair color is like 101 stuff. It doesn't change the composition. If you overlay them, they would still be the exact same. So if this work was intended to fly under the radar, I think they simply would have done that. I think they would have been able to do that fairly easily. So part of me thinks it's a low-key conspiracy. Another part of me just thinks the person who did this was dumb. It's incredibly hard for me to believe. It's also incredibly hard for me to believe that Billie Eilish, one of the biggest names in music right now, who works with social media managers and artists to make her merch, it's hard for me to think that she specifically knew about this and just thought changing the hair color would be enough. She's not involved in the artwork. And that's something I super duper want to touch on as well because there's going to be a lot of people who attack Billy for this because her name's on it. And straight up, I get it. I understand her. She's like it, her as a brand. It's her brand's fault that this is happening. But straight up, if you think every popular music artist is in charge of this shit and is doing this themselves and she specifically saw this and took it to someone and said, put this on merch, I would like to be a thief. You're mistaken. Like Billie Eilish, who is on tour every night, musical artist who is successful and thriving, doing a lot of stuff. Billie Eilish is not bald falls deep in the creative process of making merchandise for herself. She just isn't. If if anything, and this is probably the most involvement I would even be willing to give her, she tells an artist or her manager or someone who works for her what she wants on merch, what she's interested in, and then they bring her mock-ups, they bring her art, and they bring her the sweaters and say, which one do you want? She wasn't on Twitter looking at this person's art thinking, I'm gonna be a thief today. She wasn't photoshopping the hair late at night thinking that it would be a big scam and no one would see it. At most, she probably said, oh, that sweatshirt with the girls on it, I like that one. And she loved the art on it, put it on and approved it as a collaboration with the other company. It's, to me, it's the same thing as when beauty YouTubers work with a company and they say they were working on this palette and they went to the lab and they tested it and they were like, I want this color, this color. I did all this work with this palette. They purposely mislead their viewers and say they are doing all this shit when in reality, the company sends them samples, they send them what they want to release, the person says, yeah, I like that one and that one, I don't like that one, change it, and that's it. It's simple, it's formulaic, they're not really a part in, a part of the creativity. So, you see what I'm saying? So, generally speaking, I don't think Billy the person is a part of the thievery, I think Billy the brand is. To me, this whole scenario just screams how easy
easy it is to steal art and be credited for art that is not yours. I would love to say that the proper channels were taken and they would definitely like try to reach out and like wanted to work with the original artist. But at the same time, Billie Eilish and her creative team have mad money and straight up stealing is pretty profitable because not every artist has the money to sue you. Most of the time, big companies will do shit like this to artists simply because they know they can get away with it and nobody wants to pay the legal fees. And that sucks. But again, it's so phenomenally easy to get away with stealing art nowadays. Had the person who noticed this first not spoken out, had multiple people not spoken out, no one would be talking to this. If you ever find an artist who is a small but amazingly talented and you have a bigger platform, it's so easy to screenshot their work and pretend it's yours. It happens all the time. I mean, there is a tutorial about how to Photoshop watermarks off of art and how to Photoshop signatures off of art on YouTube. And what's worse is if someone with a huge platform steals your shit and steals shit like it's their job, speaking out about it can be scary because they literally have the numbers behind them that you do not have. They can say that you're the real thief and you're the real scammer. And I've seen it time and time again with people who have big platforms who just lie in order to continue doing the shitty things they are doing. And it fucking sucks. I think the problem here is that someone on Billie Eilish's team or the Siberia team, I don't know who made the mock-ups, has a huge issue on their hands because someone on that team straight up stole someone's artwork. It's not an if and or but, they did it. This isn't a reference situation, they just stole. Someone involved with the creative concept work is a fucking thief and that's fucked up. Will we ever know who exactly did it? No. But because it's a product with Billie's name on it and Siberia's name on it, it falls on her and it falls on them. Even though, again, I want to say I don't think Billy as a person is in control of the art. She didn't literally do that. Unless I missed the memo where Billy said at any point, I draw all my merch, I create it myself, I am in the labs merching it up, I don't know how merch is made, then yes, it's her fault. I would fully blame her and the horse she rode in on, but I don't think that's the case. She's a pop act, not Michelangelo. She's a creative musician, not a merch designer. I saw someone tweet that her creative team was now working with the original artist in order to compensate them, which is really nice and fair that they're doing that after she's been called out and working on it after they stole for her. Kind of screams to me of a little too late. Um, if the company hadn't been caught, if no one had noticed, if no one had spoken out, I don't think they would be doing that. I don't think they would be taking the right route with this. Um, and straight up, I think it would have just been ignored. They wouldn't be helping that person make money off their art. They would still be trying to profit off their art, but they wouldn't compensate that person. And that fucking sucks. So the question I actually want to end on uh, with you guys right now is how do we stop this? How in a social media age where people are posting their art, their sketches, their processes, how do we keep other people from taking that and crediting it? Because again, watermarks don't work. There's a tutorial on YouTube on how to get rid of watermarks. Signatures don't work. You sign it, someone can Photoshop it out. This shit is prevalent and I kind of feel like it shouldn't be. So what do we do? Let me know what you guys would do in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Later!